Okay, a very warm welcome to the semi-final of the second semi-final, in fact, of the 1v1 winter tournament between Death Tacticus and Yerand. Uh, this one is uh, the winner. Uh, will go into our final and will play PB head in that final. The loser will play Blues in the third place playoff. Alongside me for this one is Philothanic. Hey, we have a lovely map. There are plenty of resource patches, uh, decent prices, high silicon, high high uh, chems, no nukes. Um, I'm looking something over to the east of the colony. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe a robot down in this. I, I was going to say a scavenger looks really good just because chems are high. Yeah, and, the uh, it's a chem spot colony here. as well. It's good. There's, There's one in the south, spot maybe. To the left of that chem, the scavenger spot, there are plenty of options. So I'm not surprised yeah. that our players are just going to try and get as much of the starting bonus cash as possible. Yep, and in a 1v1, it's only one of the players that can get that money. Uh, the other one doesn't get it. DT does go for the scavenger, slightly greedy scavenger, uh, away from the carbon. Uh, takes the low aluminum tile and the high carbon tile and the high silicon tile, which is a very interesting decision. Uh, prioritizing that, I guess he knew he could get to HQ2 quickly, and uh, therefore he knew that he could go into that second carbon tile and the three aluminum tiles. Yaren going for that robot spot I picked out right in the middle of all that iron, aluminum, and silicon. He is going to ship his iron. He decided to found, crush a little bit of that aluminum and silicon to get him started. He does have the upgrade to HQ2 also. Yep, so DT a little bit ahead, but not too, too far ahead. Uh, it does have those three metal mines, nearly five aluminum a second coming in. And uh, yeah, he's shipping that shipping that carbon a little way, uh, which uh, might be a little bit of a concern for him. But uh, again, fuel not enormously high at the moment. He's going to be burning, what, 0.6 or so on those two tiles, 0.5 in fact, on those two tiles. So not enormous, not an enormous concern for him. And uh, power starting to get up as well. We've had, we've had another chem module at the colony, so that chem price is looking, uh, looking even better. Uh, Yaren, though, deciding he wants to go into a ton of steel and a ton of iron as well. Four steel mills uh, split across from his base. Yeah, that'll definitely drive the power up. And unfortunately, given the price of iron, it means Yaren is in trouble if it yep. gets power surge. And that was exactly what happened. Yaren uh, getting his iron shut down. And yeah, the steel is not going to be doing anything for a long, long time. That's uh, really, really painful for him. DT, though, racing on ahead to HQ3. That does have that water tile, does have those two carbon tiles. So he's got plenty of production. And uh, Yaren electing not to use his black market cooldown uh, to shut it down just yet. Yeah, well, Yaren has 7k in the bank right now. He needs 10k to upgrade, and all of that's in steel. Um, so he does need a little, little bit more to get to that upgrade. He's just going to be sitting here waiting for this iron breeze to come undone as his steel mills are just sitting here doing nothing. Yeah, the good news for him, <coughs> excuse me, the good news for him is that DT does not have the money to purchase another freeze just yet, which uh, would be something that he could, uh, he could use if he had four and a half thousand and suggest that would almost end the game because DT would just be racing on ahead with his production. Interesting decision though from DT to go into glass instead of chems and that uh, that really is an interesting decision because glass just isn't all that profitable. In fact, glass was losing Death Tactics money and Yaren decided to freeze it. Yaren shut it down. Although, mm, not sure on. about that. No, glass, sorry, that's the, um, I apologize, that was the bug a little observer bug where sometimes it shows the net profit power. So Glass was actually earning with a, power, yeah, a little bit of money. So yeah, and shut it down. Yeah, so I was both, gonna say, I mean, I mean it, it's not it's not strictly sense. losing money. It is if you take the debt into account. But even so, I mean, it's just not it's, it's not anywhere near as good as chems. Certainly, uh, chems are very profitable. Seventy four, uh, forty for a single tile. Yeah. So um, so that's really good. Uh, into two farms as well, though. The farms are going to be excellent for DT uh, because he is going to have uh, that coming online right now, getting 0.9 of that a second, and that will be cash. 
and that's money that he can use, I would imagine, very soon to get into the black market. Yaron, though, going into those farms as well. So, uh, interesting start from him with the steel, which is now online and is going to be online, I would suggest, for a while. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised Yaron hasn't actually bought up a little bit of iron just to protect himself from that surge again. Although, yeah, once again, DT not having the money online. to do that just yet. Yaron, uh, DT now in three farms, though. Yeah, Yaron still needs to get to HQ3. DT's going into the first power on the board of Geotherm. Power is creeping up 224 and rising, and Yaren's driving a lot of that power consumption with these steel mills. He's already in $61,000 in debt and climbing, and he's burning 500 second in power money. Yep, that is a lot yeah. of power to be using. He is now HQ3. Is there a route into power for him? There probably is. He's got relatively straightforward solar panels if he wants, and he instead goes into two reactors. So he's going to be riding this debt line just a little bit longer. He's putting another water pump down as well so he can get into that life support. But again, the power surge comes down on PT's farms. Again, there's not really any any semblance of power production at all. And these reactors are going to be burning even more of that power. $80 a second in debt for each of these reactors. The tactic is moving into a second geothermal plant, senses an opportunity with Yaren currently ignoring power and just burning through all three power a second. Eight, almost $900 in power debt. Yaren's already at C bond rating, which is not what you want to see at HQ3 on Soul 3, 113 k in debt this game feels like it's going to be decided by power and debt like so many other well, this tournament the, these solar panels though with the solar flare as well two geos a solar flare dt is going to be paying off that debt so so quickly and it's really difficult to see a way in which yaren gets back into this game or even a way in which yaren stops dt from paying off all of that debt and actually making power money because it's only 36,000 that he's in now. Yaren drops into that D rating and can't now use the black market. So again, he's just running out of options. DT almost making power money. And I think as soon as he does, he's going to be in such a good position to just be able to uh, to majority buy Yaren oh, yeah. before Two Yaren can do anything about it. paid off all his debt, making just over 2K a second on power alone. There's a yep, lot so... of money and it's going to be quickly increasing. We have some shorts on items that DT is in. The food. The black market is in. Yeah, I mean, Yaren did it too, but yeah, there's, there's nothing Yaren can do at this point. And yeah, DT, I mean, that power money is drying up a little bit. Power now down below 100, but I mean, the effects of that are twofold, right? Because DT can't make any more power money or much more power money, but also Yaren can't pay off his debt anymore. And that's a really pressing concern for him. He is going to take probably uh, a D debt tick here. In fact, he's going to pay off all of his debt, I think. I know he's going to try and defend himself instead, but this is going to be a D debt tick, and there's very little that Yaren can do about it. It's going to be a huge amount of money. Geotherm comes down, but again is mutinied away by DT. So that has been uh, taken away from him. It was a $50,000 debt tick. Yeah, uh, that's, that's the game right here. <clears throat> Doesn't quite have the money to finish it yet, well, but he very soon will. He should. He, he has a little bit of a production advantage. I think Yaren moving into chems might be just barely enough to put him over the edge yes. if these chem plants can come online quick enough, and they don't. They do not. So DT takes game number one. Not a particularly long game number one, and it was Yaren just stalling out a little bit at HQ2. Get thought that iron shut down, and that meant that he really couldn't do anything with those steel mills. He didn't go into power uh, basically until HQ4. Had those two wind turbines, had the geotherm, but again, unable to use the black market into D levels of debt. And yeah, DT saying if you skip power, so it's going to happen. Yeah, especially in and, 1v1 uh, where power price currently is so volatile. Yeah. And yeah, Yaren, uh, Yaren just needed. Point about the. Sorry, no, to build his steel mills off on this side of his base like Rahi says in chat yep, he built yep. built it over yep. on the silicon he uh 
could have switched it out into silicon, got enough silicon to put down some couple panels and avoid going into so much power debt. Yeah, and it was the power debt that uh, that really really killed you. And the one hundred thirty one thousand uh, dollars purchased of power. And that's too much money. It's certainly too much money before you get to that HQ four HQ five level where you can burn through that amount of debt just with the amount of money you're making. That certainly wasn't the case for Yarand in this one. 